Argument Alice, Framework Freddy, Comparison Connie, Structure Sam, Delivery Danny, Rebuttal Rosie, R, the Diology Debate Super Team. They are here to help develop your superpowers. Hello everyone, Argument Alice here, and for today, we will be talking about principled arguments and how to use them in debates. It is important to note that arguments fall into one of two categories, practical or principled. Practical arguments are ideas that deal with outcomes and consequences, the effect of taking a particular action. On the other hand, principled arguments deal with values and beliefs, the rightness or wrongness of a particular action. Principle arguments are about rights, duties, obligations, and morals. Are we obligated to take certain actions? Do we have a right to certain privileges and benefits? Do we have a duty to support one another, an organization, or the government? Is a certain action morally wrong? We will see that these questions are often independent of the consequences of a particular action. Let's illustrate this difference with an example. For the topic, violent sports should be banned, there can be many arguments made for the pro and con sides of the debate. One argument on pro can be about how banning violent sports would lead to the safety of people, especially athletes that get hurt because of boxing and martial arts. Because this argument is about what will happen to people, we can say that the argument is a practical one. On the other hand, Khan can argue that people should have the right to choose whether they want to join violent sports or not, even if they end up getting hurt. Because this argument is about rights and what they can and cannot do with their bodies, we consider this a principled argument. So even if the consequence of engaging in violent sports is terrible, we argue it is the right thing to do to allow people to choose to accept these consequences. Remember, Practical arguments deal with outcomes. Principled arguments deal with beliefs about what is right. For this lesson, we will go through the importance of principled argumentation and take steps to construct them effectively in a debate. Let's begin. First of all, why is it important to know how to identify and create principled arguments? There are a few reasons this is important. For one, Relying on outcomes is not always the most effective thing, especially in some debates. For example, if we were on the con team on the topic, violent sports should be banned, it would be tough to argue against the pro idea of safety and protection of athletes, especially if you tried to prove a practical outcome on your side as well. If we want to prove that your side also protects people, we need to find another way to do it. It might be better to launch an argument about principles instead. The con side can say that the right to choose is just as important or more important than ensuring people are safe. The pro then has to argue that violent sports are dangerous and why people should not have the right to choose to do dangerous things. Deciding whether a particular side will focus more on principle or practical is an excellent way to approach any debate and should be a priority when preparing for any topic. Another reason principled arguments are important is that principled arguments make the practical arguments stronger. Having a mix of principle and practical ideas strengthens a debate overall. For example, if the debate was on the topic, homework should be banned, a practical argument on pro might be about how students will be able to rest more and enjoy their time in school more. If we want to make the case on this side stronger, we can add a principled argument about why students have the right to relaxation in the first place. This way, even if the other side responds to the practical argument, we still argue why giving children the right to rest is important in the first place. Now that we know why principled arguments are important, we can begin to give the necessary steps to making a principled argument. Step one is to state the principle our side is defending. Next, make it clear to the judge what our side's value or belief stands for, which also serves as the argument's title. Step two is to give reasoning with the use of examples. 
In running principled arguments, we make use of examples because it shows us other situations where the principle also applies. These examples are called analogies or intuition pumps. For instance, if the topic is on whether makeup should be banned, the con team will talk about how people have the right to self-expression. The analogy or intuition pump here would be to say that people also have the right to use fashion to express themselves and that banning makeup would be the same as forcing everyone to look the same. As you can see with the example, relating a principled argument to another idea helps in making the idea much more realistic and easier to grasp. The last step would be to conclude the argument briefly and state why the principled argument is important. Impacting your principle is crucial to making sure the argument succeeds in a debate. Therefore, make sure you conclude your argument by reminding the judge and debaters what the principle is and why your side stands for it. Let's see these three steps in action. First, listen carefully to how this pro speaker builds the principled argument. On the topic, animal testing should be banned. My argument today is on the principle of animal rights. We believe that animal testing should be banned because it violates the rights of animals in the process. For my reasoning, I would like to point out that animal testing often leads to a lot of torture and harm to the animals, and that this is unacceptable. As humans, we need to respect other creatures and avoid putting them in harm's way. This is similar to why we make sure that humans are not tortured and why we also rescue animals from harmful situations. We believe that we already protect the rights of animals and other living things. We need to make sure we do it all the time. The principle of animal rights is important because life on Earth does not just mean the protection of humans, but it also means the protection of every living creature that lives with us. To conclude, we believe that animal testing should be banned because we should uphold animal rights. We now have a clear picture of what principled arguments look like in a debate. Now that you know how to make them, try to develop your own in debate rounds. Good luck, everyone.